All right, so let's go over the solutions for your topic three homework um, for factoring. Um, once you've corrected your homework, then you can turn that in on Teams today. All right, so for number one, to factor this quadratic, we're going to break it apart into two binomials. Um, we have y squared, so we need a y times y in the first spot. In the second position, we need those two numbers to multiply to 44 and add to 15. So that's going to be 11 times 4, because 11 plus 4 gives you that 15 in the middle. For number 2, um, so we have a times a to give us that a squared. In the second position, we have to find numbers that multiply to 15. That's going to be 5 times 3 because we want those two numbers to also add to 8. So 5 plus 3 gives us 8. c squared plus 11c plus 18. So again, we need c times c in the first position. In the second position, we want to multiply to 18. And we're going to choose 2 and 9 because 2 plus 9 gives us 11. n squared plus 7n plus 6. So n times n, multiply to 6, so that's 6 times 1, 2 times 3. We want to add to 7, so 6 times 1. Here we only have two terms, and notice that both those terms are perfect squares. So we have a difference of squares. x times x gives us the x squared, and then the square root of 25 is 5. Okay. And then because we have that subtraction, we're going to have a positive and a negative. And the reason why this works is because we get an x squared, you get a negative 5x, and you get plus 5x minus 25. So those in the middle, they actually cancel away. So that's why we want them to be the same but opposite signs. Okay, d times d, 1 times 4, 2 times 2. We're going to choose 1 times 4 to get us to 5. Now we do need to get a negative 5d in the middle. So in order to do that, they have to add up um, together to get negative. So it's a negative 1 and negative 4. And then when you do negative 1 times negative 4, you get that positive 4 for the last term. Again, we have two perfect squares being subtracted. The square root of 121 is 11. And 1's plus, 1's minus x times x. For 80, we have 1 times 80, 2 times 40. If it's going to be a 2 in the middle, that means we need to start looking at some larger numbers that um, multiply into 80. <clears throat> so we know we have like 4 times 20. Let's start to break it down. Oh, 10 times 8. Didn't, should have thought of that one earlier. <laughs> okay, so we have, we're going to need a positive 10 minus 8 in order to get that positive 2 in the middle. All right, so x squared minus 2x minus 8, x times x. We have a 1 times 8, a 2 times 4. We need a 2 in the middle, and if you do 4 minus 2, you get 2. But we need to get a negative 2. So that means that the 4 needs to be negative and the 2 needs to be positive, because negative 4 plus 2 gives us negative 2. y squared minus 4, we have another difference of squares. Square root of 4 is 2, plus, minus. Another difference of squares. Square root of 49 is 7. 1's plus, 1's minus. All right, so here we only have two terms, but they're not perfect squares. Instead, what we have here is we can factor out a GCF. And so what we can take out of the 3 and the 15 is a 3, and what we can take from the x squared and the x is a 3x. So we're going to go ahead and factor that out to determine what goes inside the parentheses, divide these by 3x. There, that's all you can do.
All right, number 13, again, all we can do is take out a GCF and our GCF is 10X. And so go ahead and divide both of those by 10X. We're left with an X there minus four. Here it looks like we can take out a seven and an X squared. So divide by seven X squared. That cancels, you're left with just one X. 21 divided by seven is three and those um, X's cancel. Here we can take out a three B. That cancels, you're left with B, left with seven. All right. Now we're back to a quadratic with three terms. And that's only one times one. There's only one option, but you need it to add to two, so that's perfect. One plus one is two. You could also write that as x plus one quantity squared. And we're just doing a little review here, so plotting these on that coordinate plane. So when you plot the point negative three comma five, you're going left three up five. And it says to label each one with the problem number, so put 17 by that. 18 is at two comma seven. Zero two for 19. Negative three, zero for 20. 21 is at zero, negative six. Four, zero for 22. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So here's six, negative six, negative six is 0. 0.23. And 25 is at two, negative five. One, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so what quadrant is the point number 17 in? So number 17, so this is quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. So 17 is in quadrant two. 18 is in quadrant one, 23 is in quadrant three, and 24 is in quadrant four. All right, so go ahead and correct the ones that you missed. Show your corrections on your paper and give your score at the top and submit that on Teams.